A Harry Potter move over and forget about those Hunger Games. There is a plucky heroine who takes on spaceships, larger than life aliens, and more. She's the star of a new book, A Hero for One Law. Author and illustrator Tony. Oh boy, pronounce your last name for me one more time. I thought I had this down. Dieterlizzi. Yes. Or, Joining us live now this morning. Or if we're in Italy, right? Dieterlizzi. Yes. Right, right. Okay. Which sounds even cooler. It sounds cool. Very good. Uh, an accomplished author. Uh, people may know you from your other famous series, The Spiderwick Chronicles. Spiderwick Chronicles. That's right. Yeah, I did those with um, Holly Black uh, a few years ago, and they made it into a film. And um, which was great and a dream come true. And um, I loved that age range. Those books were made primarily for, you know, young, maybe like fifth grade kids around 10, 11 years old. So we call them tweens? Yeah, they Ish. are. You would call them tweens. Those books are generally called like middle grade reader. And Harry Potter, Percy Jackson, those books fall right in that same exact category. It seems like it's a very popular genre nowadays. It seems like it's really getting kids into reading early and, and hooked. I think that's the key, right? Because it, up to that point, a lot of times what happens is you are reading books. You're going to a library or a bookstore or what have you. And you're reading books because you have to, right? It's an assignment that your teacher has or librarian has given you. And right at that age is right where it can switch and you pick up a book, not because you have to, but because you want to. And I want to be a part of that. I want to be a part of that moment that could possibly make a, a lifetime reader. So I think this book could probably do the trick. Some say it is the Wizard of Oz meets Star Wars. I'll take that. That that's sounds that's appealing. That works for me. What is the inspiration for this one? I was um, inspired by these classics that I had read when I was younger. Um, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, The Wonderful Wizard of Oz, Peter Pan. I loved all those, those books. Those are some of my favorites. My mom read those books to me. I read them when I was older. And all those books focus on a young female heroine who kind of leaves home and goes into this Neverland or Wonderland and kind of understands what home and a family is and then returns. So I wanted to kind of do my 21st century version of that. And I thought it would be really cool to infuse a little bit of aliens and robots and tech because that's the so world we kind of Right, there is this dark side to it, which we've uh, we, we've seen a lot more emerging lately. And you mentioned 21st century. Boy, you're really jumping into it. Tell us about the high-tech way that you can make this thing come to life. Oh, that's uh, you're talking about the augmented reality. Yeah. So the book has actually these, these few symbols kind of scattered throughout the book. And if you have a web camera, you go to the website, wandla.com, hold the book up, and in the first book, we did a three-dimensional map that kind of popped out of the book, and you can move it and zoom around with it. And in the new book, we did like a video game. So you get to pilot the ship that's on the cover of the book simply by just holding the book and steering it. I think we have some really video cool. of that too. Uh, basically. Yeah, there I am talking about it. Getting ready. <laughs> I think we have some other video of it uh, that we, we'll, we'll try to pull up. Uh, you know, this is one of these books that if, if kids get hooked on it, you're going to see it made into a movie. We saw that with the Spiderwick Chronicles. Right. What is your experience in translating a book into a movie? It's, it's, I'm fascinated by the adaptation process, to be honest with you. I mean, you're taking a book that's, you know, four or five hundred pages, and you have to condense it down to a 90-page screenplay. And that's a trick. So what happens oftentimes is plot points move around. Um, certain characters may get truncated a little bit. And I think that's why oftentimes when we go to a movie, we go, wow, it's not like the book. I like the book. But, well, the book's got <laughs> pages and pages that it can tell the story in. But I really am intrigued and, and excited by the uh, idea that you could take a story and adapt it into another completely different media. And if it works, it's Kay. amazing. Yeah. No, I mean, talk about pulling in the younger generation. So you've got some book signings coming up here. That's right. I'll be in uh, El Cerrito uh, this afternoon at 3 at the Barnes & Noble. Okay. And you can see uh, Tony there. Uh, you are going to be, yeah, there today, El Cerrito. Information's there on your screen. And also we have that for you on CBSSF.com. Tony, thanks so much for being here this thanks morning. Thanks for having me. And we will uh, have, also have a link to your web website on uh, CBSSF.com. Okay. Thank we'll you. be right back.